Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll be joined by Rob Palekas from the Prairie Center for the Arts. Then we'll talk to Dewey Bryant about the older adult market. We'll close out the program by meeting a new team on the Schaumburg Police Force with Officer Nate Miller and K-9 Officer Apollo. All of this and more today here on Speaking of Schaumburg. The Prairie Center for the Arts provides events and entertainment all year round. Here to tell us what's coming up this spring is uh, Prairie Center's production supervisor, Rob Palekas. Rob, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Once Thank again, you. welcome. Once again, always good to be back. Tell us about the, the spring shows. Oh, gosh. Well, we have a lot going on. Uh, we have uh, a couple of programs coming up, and we still have our brochure. If you want to stop by the Prairie Center and pick it up, we still have this. And uh, we have our, our main season program. We're running down. Our season is, is winding down, but we do have a couple shows left. We do have uh, Los Lonely Boys on Sunday, March 28th. Uh, that's the, almost sold out. That's almost sold out. About about 50 tickets left. So, uh, you know, when people see this, they're going to want to get tickets Lost right away. Los Lonely Boys. Los Lonely Boys. You know, they're, they're these uh, three brothers, uh, kind of this tex mex blues rock sound uh very fun very very powerful uh great music just just great party music so uh that's on sunday march 28th and um for those people who um enjoy a little gilbert and sullivan oh yes there's a show called i've got a little twist a play on i've got a little list uh -huh. Okay. Yes, and which is a song, of course, from the Mikado. And uh, this is a show that um, that it's it's the New York Gilbert and Sullivan players, and uh, they. Uh uh, they put together a show that, that basically uh, it, it tells us the history of, of Broadway and how pretty much all of Broadway shows come from Gilbert and Sullivan. Oh, really? They're kind of the first Broadway Broadway stars, really, uh, with Pirates of Penzance and, and HMS Pinafore. And uh, and you can still see musical comedy takes a lot from that. And they and they've put together this nice review uh, and and very funny review uh, that's that's based on on Gilbert and Sullivan's material, but also some Rodgers and Hammerstein and and other contemporary. More recent composers. Oh, yeah. so, so that's coming up on uh, Sunday, May 10th at 2 o'clock. So that's going to be a well, great got tickets sold already? <laughs> got plenty of tickets for that. So you can buy them on uh, prairiecenter.org or just call us uh, at the Prairie Center. We, we've done that before, haven't we? Uh, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan? We've done Gilbert. We love Gilbert and Sullivan here. Uh, we have our summer theater program of high school and college students, and we did Pirates of Penzance in 2009, and then the Mikado in 2010. So, uh, and and uh, the, the fun thing about, about Gilbert and Sullivan is that is that there's no copyright on the material because it's pretty old. It's before the uh, you know the, uh, it was done in the 19th century, so you can kind of have fun with it. Okay. And we do. So you can change that. things. Huh? You can change one or two things. <laughs> which, which which one or two things are you going to change, Rob? Uh, well, well, actually, we uh, we we have a, we're announcing our summer theater show this year is going to be HMS Pinafore. It's a Gilbert and Sullivan year, so uh, uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll change. Uh, well, I don't want to give anything. Is away. There, there a song for, uh, in, in that? Uh... I am the monarch of the sea, the ruler of the queen's navy. I can't go on. <laughs> Well, you're on, obviously. I'm on now. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of great material from that. I am, I'm called Little Buttercup. You know that song. I'm called Little Buttercup, sweet little buttercup. I've heard it. Yeah. Maybe I don't, I'm not I don't singing know it properly. So, right but that, but that's going to be a great show. And then, we, of course, we have the we have the programs that we put on ourselves here at the Prairie Center. Uh, one of them, which which I think you're very familiar with, is Senior Follies. Oh, sure, yeah. And uh, that that features the talents of. Uh, area senior citizens, and not not just Schaumburg, but people from from neighboring communities as well. Uh, well we're we, getting some some response on that now. We are getting some response on that now. We're getting a lot of people who want to audition, and we do audition uh, for this show. Auditions are going to be on Tuesday, March twenty fourth, okay. uh, and it's open to any senior who's sixty two and up. And if they uh, if they have an act, it doesn't matter what it is. How many acts did they have last year? We, we had about, I think, I think between uh, about a dozen or so acts last year. We had everything from from stand-up comics to to singers to dance. We had a couple dance. Uh, we had a dance company, a tap dance group. Uh, we had another couple do ballroom dance. And I know we had a comedian. And we did have a comedian as well. So we're we're open to anything. Yeah, we we uh, we like to uh, <laughs> we won't let anyone in. <laughs> That's not true because we we we've only limited space. We you know there's so much time we have for the show. So we we hope to accept everyone, but you never know so and you'll have you know. a hook handy 
Uh, we always have the hook handy. Yeah, and and if if any reason people should come to see it, there's uh, it's for the the wonderful uh, master of ceremonies that we have. Yes, and, and I hope you're available. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, well, the, the follies are the nineteenth, the Sunday, April nineteenth. Uh, it's at two o'clock. It really is. I mean, it it just it just has it has a very nice uh, atmosphere to it. I think I think the people are, audiences here support the performers. Uh, it's it's a genuinely genuinely wonderful. Um, a program environment. That, How many acts created, so. make the final cut? What? So I will, we'll, we'll, you know, as much as we, as many as we can fit in, you know, with any act uh, should be less than five minutes long, so we can, you know, just kind of get them all in there. Uh, but that's that's pretty much all we're going to have room for. You know, we want to keep a nice tight show. So, but but fortunately, there's I think there's enough talent we've had. We had some wonderful singers in, in past years. Uh, if you, uh, you you'll recall that we had a gentleman who sang a Johnny Cash tune, Tony Bennett, and uh, did uh, Tony or Dean Martin. I can't remember was which it one Dean Martin. Did, okay. Dean Martin, yeah. Okay. And, uh, and so we we and he was pretty good. I thought. Yeah, he was. Know, so yeah, he was really great. So, um, so we'll have you know, and so we we really encourage people to come and and give their shot. There's one woman who sang um, a song called, oh, she sang, it was from, from South Pacific, Honey Bun. Yes. And it was a really adorable number. And I said, well, you must have done a lot of theater in your life. And she said, no, I've never, I've never been on stage before. And, and she sang like a pro. She was wonderful. So uh, it's, it's really a wonderful event. And, and the event itself, I think tickets are only $5 for it. Uh, we have a little reception, a, des a dessert reception after the show. Um, and, and it's just a great time. It really is a fun time. And the so. audience really gets, gets into it, too. And so. they really do get into yeah. it. You know, they, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of it's kind of sentimental stuff. You'll hear some oldies and things like that, some, some tracks, some, some tunes from, from the good old days. And I, and I think that brings back a lot of fond memories uh, for them. But, you, you know, you also have some people. We had a woman who did some hip-hop dancing, you know. So, so we have a little, you know, kind of a contemporary mix in there as well. So it's a, it's a great show. But that's not the only thing we have coming. Okay. We also have, uh, let's go to the other end of the spectrum and focus on teens. We have our Screen Test Student Fest. How many years is this now? For and this is our ninth annual festival. I, I really thought it was going to be done by the, by the third year. I really did, but it just kept growing and growing. And it's a wonderful, I don't know why I said that. It, it was always great, you know. But, you know, it's, it's always interesting. You never think that something like that is going to catch on. But uh, it's been going strong for, uh, for nine years, and we keep getting more and more um, entries, more submissions. And I think you have a lot of kids who are with access to... to What's the age range on that? It's for high school. Well, it's actually for kids in grades 5 through 12. So, for, so we have, it's a two-night festival. The first night is, is going to be showing films from kids who are in grades 5 through 8. And the second night, that's the Saturday, April 25th, is going to be for high school students. And uh, we, we show some really, really uh, 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 accomplished works from these kids. Uh, these, are not, these are not the kids who just pick up a camera and start shooting. These are people who actually sit down and write a story and, and, and develop a, a vision for, for their films. Um, and everything from, from stop action animation, you know, claymation, uh, to, to, you know, serious drama, to all out just silly comedy, so. Have we had repeats? Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're We've had kids come back who, who are really talented filmmakers who, who you know, the, you know the, 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 the cream rises to the top, they say. Mm -hmm. And kids who've been great one year will come back for submit another film and they're going to be in it again. So uh, we love seeing them. We love seeing them grow in the festival. But we also love seeing, you know, new filmmakers in there as well. Uh, is there a, is there a time, time limit on, on their, their, their film? Or yeah, well, there, yeah, 10 minutes is the, is the limit. So it's a short film festival. So they have to tell their story in 10 minutes or less. Uh, a lot of them are, we actually have one category that's called uh, Flicks and Six. And, and uh, for people who are familiar with the app Vine, which, which features six second films, that's what we want. We want people to make a six second movie, no more, no less, and tell their story in six seconds. And they do it, and it's, and it's pretty funny, often. So, uh, so we have that as well. Uh, the deadline for that is March 9th. So if there's time, people can still submit a film. And we want to see, we, like, we want group projects, we want student projects, we want... Uh, okay, you got seniors and you, and you got young people, what else, what else you got? We've got a youth orchestra and youth choir. Uh, the youth orchestra has, uh, uh, the Schomburg Youth Symphony Orchestra is doing a special performance on March 14th, Concert 1.0. It is for kids who have never seen a classical concert before. It's at 6.30 on March 14th. It's a short one-hour concert, but it's going to play like a real classical concert. It's going to be really fun. Uh, uh, they can they can buy tickets at the Prairie Center. Uh, they're only ten dollars for adults, five dollars for kids or seniors. Great show.
It's going to be fantastic. Well, well Rob, it's, it certainly sounds like it. So know, there you go. That's the spring. We've got I, a lot going you, on. You've got to give me a little more enthusiasm when you... When you, you, you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, bursting out of my uh, skin right now, so... <laughs> the village of Schaumburg was recently presented with the Governor's Hometown Award. Learn more about the award next here on Speaking of Schaumburg. The Village of Schaumburg was presented with the Governor's Hometown Award for its Adult Market, a free program that helps supply adults 60 and over with fresh market produce. Here to tell us more about it is Schaumburg's Human Services Supervisor, Duree Bryant. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you. Tell us about this adult market. Okay. I qualify, by the way. You do, and I'm going to qualify this summer. Okay. I just now announced to the world how old I'm going to be this summer. Um, the Older Adult Market is a program that the Village of Schaumburg does in collaboration with the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Okay. Uh, it began in the summer of 2012, so we're getting ready to finish our third year this coming summer. And um, it basically supplies uh, free shelf staple items such as uh, canned fruits and vegetables, canned meats, cereal, rice, beans, that type of thing, along with uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Where does that come from? The, the, it comes from the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Okay. They, they get their food from um, you know, local and national grocery store chains and also a lot of community organizations have food drives for them. Okay. So that's the source of their food. And then um, we have the market uh, two Fridays a month uh, at the barn in, where we have our senior center um, from 1 to 2.30. And the uh, produce and the shelf staple items are all set up and it's kind of called a market because the idea is that the seniors come and kind of shop for their food they they make selections themselves uh, rather than someone putting a bag of food together for them and saying here's what you get or mm -hmm. whatever so um, the food is delivered in a big truck that greater chicago food depository has it's climate controlled and uh, they have their truck drivers unload the food on pallets but they won't bring it all the way into the barn why is that i guess it's probably has to do with labor laws okay, or whatever okay. their contract is sure sure so we have volunteers that that come on the friday mornings that we have the, that the market starts in the afternoon and they take all the food off the pallets and bring it into the barn and we have tables all set up we have all the uh, shelf staple items kind of together and then we have the fruits and vegetables together also is there a limit on, on what a, a senior can there is what um the Greater Chicago Food Depository knows what they're going to be delivering to us, and they set the amounts because they have been keeping track through our records of how many people come each market. So they kind of set how much they bring according to how many families we have that participate in this. And uh, so then they give us the suggested kind of maximum. So like it might say, you know, uh, one can of tuna, you know, five bananas, um, you know, six potatoes or whatever. So we put little labels by each of the food things that says you can have up to that amount of okay, that particular right. food thing. And then and they pretty much honor that. They do. And yeah. then we have, um, we've given the folks reusable food totes. So they, they bring their food tote with them and then they put the items in. And um, we have volunteers that kind of um, stay in at the different food stations and help them. How many you volunteers do you, do you normally? We uh, have... Yeah. Probably on any given Friday, we probably have 10, 12 volunteers. Where do they come from? Um, the Schomburg area. Um, some of them are from churches. Some of them are from other civic organizations. A lot of them are our own seniors that come to our daily lunch program at the barn. Do you contact them or do they just show up? They, or, or? they pretty much show up. Okay. Yeah. And then we have, there is a sign-in sheet for volunteers so that we can keep track of, you know, how many volunteers we've had. We turn all this data into the Greater Chicago Food Depository so that they kind of keep track of, you know, how many volunteers we have. Um, T typically, how many volunteers do you have? I'd, I'd say, like I say, any given time, we might have 10 or 12. I think all together, we have about 16 or 20 volunteers that okay. come at any, on any given Friday. Okay. And uh, like I say, some of our volunteers are people that came to get food at the market, 
Sure. And they now, they still get food at the market, but they come to volunteer because they feel like I'm getting something I need to give back. Sure. So they actually come and volunteer. So, and that, that's what we got this program, the Elder Adult Market, is what we got the Governor's Hometown Award for. Has the program grown over, over, over the last yes, couple of years? Yeah, it's, when it started in August of 2012, um, our first market, we had uh, 40 households that came to shop. And we now regularly have 100 plus households that come to shop um, at the market. So it has definitely grown. And when they sign in, they don't have to... Um, there's no proof of income. There's no residency requirement. They just, they sign their name. They sign their zip code so that we, like I say, there's no residency requirement, but Greater Chicago Food Depository likes to know kind of where, how far people are driving to come to this. Sure. And then they check a box that says they're 60 years of age or older. And then they put how many people live in your household altogether. And then how many of those people are 60 years of age or older? Because we have people coming in that, and you know this is happening, that sure. a lot of intergenerational households now. Sure. It's not just you know the older people that are living there, their kids and their grandkids are living there. So in that column that says you know how many people live in your household, you know we have people that might have six, seven people that are using this food, not just the people that are 60 and over. If someone wants to volunteer, uh, uh, how can I do that? Do they call you? Yeah, is they it, could it? just call our senior coordinator at the barn, Marina, at 847-524-7496, and she will tell them all about it and get them signed up. you have up. to sign up in advance to, to get the get food? No, or, you do not. You don't have to sign up in advance. Up. And if someone is not physically able to leave their home, then um, they're allowed to have someone shop for them. We just have them sign what's called a proxy letter. So um, the person who's homebound would, you know, sign this letter saying, you know, Al Larson has permission to shop for me. Um, and then we let the able-bodied person shop for them. Typically, how many, how many uh, uh, participants in the program do you have? We have, like I say, um, at, on any given market, we have uh, 100 110, 120 families that come to shop. Um, and those represent more individuals than that that are being served by the food because that's just how many households are shopping. What's so. the favorite food? You know what? They really, they, the fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables are, I have to say, amazing. I mean, they are really beautiful. Um, so I think it's exciting for them to be able to get fresh produce. Um, and we, the, the Greater Chicago Food Depository put some statistics together when I was putting the application together for the Governor's Hometown Award. And they, what they let me know is that 67% of the food is fresh produce. So it's not like 20% or 25%. I mean, most of the food that we're offering there is fresh food fresh, like I say, fruits and vegetables. So you, people come from all over? They not, do not come. But, I mean, most of the people obviously are from the Schomburg, Hoffman, maybe Streamwood, Hanover area. But we do have people that are driving, you know, 20 miles to come. Really? Yes. Okay. So, I, I, I imagine there's some real positive feedback on that too, people. Yeah, I think um, one of the things that's been nice about the market is in addition to the food that people are getting, which is important, um, we also take advantage of the fact that we have this crowd there and we provide other services to them. So at least one of the two Fridays a month, we have our village health nurse come and set up in Marina's office and do blood pressures, for instance. At least one Friday a month, we have someone from the University of Illinois Extension Services come and she makes a recipe out of some of the ingredients that are being offered at the market that day. Oh, it's like a cooking show. And so, she, so she gives a sample of that along with the recipe yeah. so that people will go home with something they can make out of the p ingredients that we have that day. That it's a great program, that day. Marie. Yeah. And you've done a wonderful so, job, by the way. Yeah, wonderful thank you. Job. Thanks. The Shamrock Police Department has recently added a new team to its force. Meet them next on Speaking of Shamrock. The police department has added a second canine team to the force. Officer Nate Miller and Apollo join us to tell us about themselves and, and the new uh, assignment. Uh, welcome to Speaking of Chambord, Nate. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. Oh, so this is Apollo, huh? Yes. Yep. Where'd the name come from? Apo they're already pre-named when they're in Germany, which is where he's from. Okay. Um, they start their training there. They go ahead and name them. And they come over to America and finish up their training 
with us for six weeks. And uh, we just usually stick with the name. Some people change it, but I thought it fit, fit him pretty well. So he came from Germany? Yes. Yes, he was born in Germany. And that's where they started training him. Okay. Then he went to Holland, where they have another kennel. And okay. then from there, he came to Indiana. Okay. And how long has Apollo been on the force now? Apollo's been on the force uh, about eight months. Okay. So he's still, he's, he's our newest dog. Okay. And um, he's still a puppy. He's just turned three, February 8th. He's an so, awful, awful big puppy. Yeah, <laughs> he's a huge puppy. And, uh, you know, I told the vet that I'm going to stop feeding him because he's already 110 pounds now. Okay. And um, he won't get any taller, but he definitely will fill out. And okay. um, we try to keep him somewhat lean because they have to have the endurance to keep working when we're doing a track or we're, when we're working the dogs. Okay. If they're too heavy or too big, they, they won't work as long. They won't fit into certain areas we need to get them into. Okay. So you don't want to get them too big. Okay. How much more training does, does Apollo kind of receive? Or? Well, we had initial six weeks of training okay. in Indiana when I first started. We continue training with them twice a month for 16 hours until they retire. So for the, until, I, until he can't work anymore, training is ongoing. Because he started his training in Germany, sure, sure. all the commands were in German. Oh, sure. There's some theories that some people say, so the bad guys can't you know, tell your dog to stay or lay down or do something like that. But simply you can change their commands to anything you want. And his, his are in German, so. How many commands does he respond to? Uh, we got about a good 12 to 15 that we use on a normal basis, plots. Um, we can teach them anything. Have you done this before, by the way, with, with the? No, sir. This is the first first dog I've worked. Okay. Um, new experience. It's like learning a whole new job, basically. Oh, sure. It's um, it's quite intimidating when you first start, and then you start getting the hang of it. And it, honestly, it's the best position that I've ever had. What kind of lifespan do they have? Or, 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 or it varies should, should by say. dog. It varies by dog based on their health. So some dogs are smaller dogs. Their hips stay stronger. You know, and they can they can last. Some of them work 11, 12 years old. Um, some bigger dogs. Nine, ten, you know, you hope for. What have you used him for? Uh, I've used him for, we use him mostly for narcotic detection. Okay. So, you know, for vehicle sniffs, um, we pull someone over, there's, there's a smell of narcotics inside the vehicle, or we just, we have suspicions that there might be narcotics. Sure. I bring him out, he sniffs around the outside of the vehicle, and he's a passive alert dog. What that means is when he detects odor of marijuana, cocaine, heroin, any type of illegal narcotic, he'll sit down and stare at wherever that odor is coming from. Really? And that, that tells me that there's odor inside that vehicle or inside that bookcase or wherever the case may be. Um, some dogs are aggressive alert where they'll start digging at wherever the odor's at. The reason why we don't do that is we don't want to ruin people's cars, homes, furniture, that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, so we use them for vehicle sniffs such as that. Um, Search warrants for homes, we'll send him inside a house. He'll go ahead and search, he'll find drugs, maybe money that's been used with narcotics. Sure. He can you know, smell stuff through walls and really? floors, everywhere. Um, we use they're, them for- They're amazing dogs in that regard, aren't they? They, they definitely are. And he's a dual purpose dog, so that's one aspect of what he does. Um, also, he does handler protection. So if I'm out, outside the car and I'm dealing with some suspicious person and they start wanting to fight me or attack me, and they're getting the best of me, I, have, I can press a little button on my uniform. It will pop the back door of my squad car open, and he's trained to come right to me and protect me if I'm getting hurt, really? attacked, or injured. Wow. Which is, you know, it's important. Oh, um, sure. Especially, you know, if you're working by yourself at night, late at night, things can happen. Um, and the third thing that he does is tracking. So um, if a little kid wanders off outside their backyard and they get lost, up to hours later, he can, I can put him down on the ground, tell him to go track, and he can go exactly where that little girl walked, and he can find them hours later. Same thing with criminals. Someone robs somebody and runs away, yeah. same thing. He can find those people. Yeah. So. Wow. How, do, how does Apollo react to the, the, this is the second, second dog you have, right? Yes. The police department has. How, how do they get along? Or don't they? Or, or, or? Well, a lot of times, because he's an intact male, he's not, he hasn't been neutered or fixed. Um, so all the dogs are alpha dogs. So anytime two alpha dogs go face to face with each other, they want to assert their dominance over each other. So in training, the dogs will bark at each other. We don't really, really let them play with each other and you know that kind of stuff sure. because they want to show who's boss. But uh, we've had him and Magic together a couple times, and they just kind of look at each other, acknowledge it. What's the name of the other dog? Uh, Magic. Magic? Yes. Okay. Magic's a German Shepherd as well. Sure. Um, he's been 
at least three, four years with the department. So he's like the veteran dog. Sure. And okay. He's the rookie. So typically, a lot of the canines don't interact very sure. much. Sure. If we're working them, we keep them on a leash. We keep them far enough distance apart where they can continue to work without being distracted. Sure. How do they react to, to, to well, smaller dogs? I mean, as far as little dogs, he's more curious than anything. Yeah. He wants to walk around with them, sniff them, play with them, and um, they bark at him. And oh, sure. He actually walks away. He's like, oh, I don't know yeah. what that's all about. Yeah. So. Yeah. So how, how, how often do you work them? I mean. uh, on the street, we're, I mean, it, it all depends. On the weekends, we can use them, I can use them three, four times, five times a night, where it's just, and we're helping other towns, not just Schaumburg. So our officers need them for a building search or a drug sniff. I go out there and help them out, and then, like, Prospect Heights, Elk Grove, they may call me over because their dog may not be working. Sure. So yeah. we go over there, plots. Plots. And it's a great thing because it, it, it's a good representation of our department. Yeah. We helped uh, Roselle catch a bad guy, a suspect that they were trying to find. He catches them. You know, it just builds a rapport oh, with, sure. with other departments. Absolutely. You know, we're always, we got to help each other out. Absolutely. So it's, a, it's a great thing. Well, it's a beautiful animal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, can I shake your hand? Absolutely. <laughs> good to have you. Thank you, sir. Show. Thank you. That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Chamber. Join us again next month for an all-new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town and maybe Apollo, too.